Good evening, friends. We are meeting again in the session of philosophy and we are discussing the Kent's philosophy. The, from the language point of view, the difficult topic from Kent's philosophy is the simple substance. Because he has tried to explain the concept of this simple substance, that is the vital force, in correlation with the scientificity, to show the scientificity of it, and he tried to explain it in the form of substance. Actually, it is too simple to understand, but made it difficult because, because he tried to correlate it with the material science. It becomes rather difficult when we try to apply one dynamic thing with the material thing. And then it creates a problem. <clears throat> so, basically, whenever we used to consider the simple substance, it is nothing but a substantial thing. A vital principle with its vital energy and force ultimately expresses through the physical things. It requires the help of physical things to show its existence. And that's why Kent has explained it as a simple substance. And all the characteristics, qualities of simple substance, which he has mentioned. He, has, he is trying to explain one by one quality, out of which certain qualities we have discussed. That simple substance dominates and controls the body. That's what we have discussed. Second point which he has explained in relation with the sim simple substance, that it is it tries to maintain the harmony. It rules with the body, it maintains the harmony between different vital organs and that chain continuously moves on. It maintains, it tries to maintain that balance. Third important thing which we have discussed, that the, whenever we think about the simple substance, the question of quantity never comes, it is the quality which matters. Because it is not a measurable thing and things are whenever things are not measurable, the quality matters, quantity never matters. One more quality which we have discussed that simple substance also has an adaptation. In fact, that adaptation itself is responsible to maintain the health as well as this adaptation, if not happens, it ultimately reflects in the disease. And that's why the disease never depends upon what is there in the surrounding, what is the reaction to that surrounding of the vital principle, of the simple substance, it depends upon it. And that's what we have discussed in last lecture. We'll go ahead today with the next paragraph. The life substance within the body is the vice regent of the soul. And the soul, in turn, is also a simple substance. All that there is of a soul operates and exists within every part of the human body. And thus, it is that simple substance acts as a vital force. The soul adapts the human body to all its purposes and higher purposes of its being. The simple substance, when it exists in the living human body, keeps that body animated, keeps it moving, perfects its uses, superintends all parts and at the same time keeps the operation of mind and will in order. So he is explaining all those qualities of the simple substance. He tries to correlate simple substance as a vital force and vital force generates from vital energy and the vital force is the product of vital principle which is nothing but the soul. So ultimately this is the thing which maintains, controls each and every movement of the body. Every, everything inside your, your, your body, every system inside your body may, are maintained through this vital uh, principle or by the name of a simple substance. This harmony is very important and to maintain this harmony is the basic function of it. To make it a complete in integration, one organ or one system with another system is the basic function of this vital principle. Let any disturbance occur in the vital substance and we see how suddenly incoordination will come. So something happens and this vital substance itself gets disturbed. Means who gets disturbed? That principle gets disturbed. 
some quarrel happened someone something happened in your life all of a sudden something have happened in your life it ultimately affects the vital principle and when it happens you get into certain state of a mind which expresses in the form of a confusion sometimes it expresses in the form of panic attack sometimes it expresses in the form of sadness it if it persists for certain period it starts reflecting it in physical symptoms those physical symptoms to which we label by the name of certain disease so this is how a disorder comes so the things which are coordinated all of a sudden becomes incoordinated this is what is the going from the state of is to the state of disease state of coordination to the state of in coordination and this is what this is how the simple substance itself is responsible to produce the disease there is a harmonious cooperation when the vital substance is continued in its normal quality and that is in health what is more perfect than the human body in health and what evidence have we any great rake than the human body when it is not in health whenever we are in the state of health we are unaware about every system we are not aware that heart is going heart is beating inside you are not aware you are not aware that you are taking the breath and you are leaving the breath every moment nothing you you are not aware you are not aware about all systems which works inside because because it is in the normal state of health where the vital substance this simple substance is in a healthy state it is trying to maintain the harmony between them and that's why it remains healthy but as soon as this vital principle gets disturbed it reflects in this disharmony of all those things then you start getting the symptomatology then you understand that you have a head then you understand you have a chest you have the heart when it starts palpitating palpitation you understand that you are having the head when it is paining so this harmony whenever happen it reflects in the form of some functional symptoms and those functional symptoms precedes the structural disorders or structural changes so there is always a first functional changes happen so patient start getting the headache off and on and patient if that patient goes to a some certain doctor he examines then he asks for investigations every investigation found to be normal and still he is complains of headache and because of which he is he is not able to concentrate he is not able to listen he is not able to write all the functions get affected that is a functional manifestation if it persists for longer time of duration or if it is palliated for longer time of duration ultimately within 2 years 3 years 4 years it gradually turns turns and then there might be a tumor which you can locate in the brain that is a pathology which develops later on so it is transformation of the functional symptoms to the structural pathology but this is not with all of a sudden it's a long time if you understand this these are the symptoms which are nothing but the expression of this disordered simple substance then if you treat on the basis of totality of the symptom the further pathology never develops you can prevent the development of pathological states on the basis of that what he says further we see also that this vital substance when in natural state when in contact with the human body it's constructive it keeps on body continually constructed and reconstructed so whenever the state of health is maintained the construction is going on and reconstruction is going on certain tissue certain cells which are degen getting degeneration and degenerated and new cells are forming your skin daily disappears the degenerated and new skin develops because because you are in state of health you are not aware about it so this is what he tries to explain over there thoroughly but when the opposite is true when the vital force from any cause withdraws from the body we see that forces that are in the body being turned loose are destructive so what he is saying 
Now he explains that whenever the this vital force, this simple substance get disturbed because of something happened in the light, that whenever it happens, it ultimately disturbs the harmony. That starts reflecting at the mind level as well as physical level. That starts producing the sim simple, simple functional symptom. The ease goes on. The dis-ease comes. So this is how a disorder starts. When these forces are not dominated or controlled by the vital force, the body tends to decay at once. So if these are not getting controlled by the vital force or if vital force is not able to cope, cope up that, then the destruction of the body starts. If it is chronic one, it definitely affects the body and until at a length the organism is destroyed. So we see that the vital force is constructive and formative. That is one more quality of vital force or simple substance. You underline those qualities because these are the qualities one must understand and which you have to explain while writing the answer. So vital force is constructive or formative and in the absence there is a death or destruction. So vital force, quality of a simple substance, vital force is constructive and formative. If we examine the very simplest form of the living organism, the plasson body, we will observe that it has essential essentials of the life, has everything in it that the very highest order of the life has. It has the properties and qualities of life substance of man and animals. It reproduces itself, it moves, it feeds, it endowed with influx, and lastly, it can be killed. So he is explaining it in relation with the smallest um, or early primitive stages of the life. For example, a simplest form, if you take an example of an amoeba, a sing singular or one cellular and unicellular organism, but still it has a life. It has a life substance. It has all functions of the life which are present in the human being also. So those are the qualities of this life principle. Those are the qualities of life principle of that amoeba. The same is effect, same is present with the life principle of. So the simple substance which is there in the unicellular organism, the similar type of simple substance present in the human organism. It has all those qualities. It has the function. So he explains over there. It moves, it feeds, it goes, and it How many you have much of the white Voice is very low, sir. Voice is very low. Not audible. Hello. Uh, is it now okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So, what he says further. Now, when you have said these things, you have predicated much of the vital substance of the highest and of the lowest. It asserts its identity. It moves and feeds. It propagates and can be killed. So, these are all qualities of the simple substance or these are all qualities of the, the vital force. It does not sustain its identity by chemical analysis, but when it is chemically analyzed, it is no longer protoplasm. Protoplasm is only protoplasm when it is living. So you cannot locate this protoplasm is the vital substance. Protoplasm is protoplasm. Life, whenever it is when life is there, then it is protoplasm. When life is not there, it is just a chemical formula. So chemically, all there is to be found of the protoplasm is it's carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, but the life substance cannot be found. You put together 54 parts of carbon, 21 of oxygen, 
16 of Sixteen of nitrogen, seven of hydrogen, and two of sulfur. And what do you suppose you will have? Simply a composite something, but not the complexity which we identify as a protoplasm. So we cannot get the living thing because living thing is not that which you can find it out in any specific material. You cannot locate, you cannot show, you cannot explain without the help of the substance, but it is not a substance, it is not a material. Simply a composite something, but not the complexity which we identify as protoplasm. In analyzing the protoplasm, what has become of life force? There is no difference in the weight after death. The simple substance cannot be weighed. Neither weight, time, nor space can be predicated of simple substance. And it is not subject of physical law such as gravitation. So this is what he is explaining. These are all last three lines. Uh, those are very important, which indicates the qualities of the simple substance, which cannot be measured, which cannot be weighed, which you cannot show. So these are not applicable. The laws of physical science are not applicable to this specific thing. And this is what he tries to explain over there. And further he says, now, when we consider this substance as an energy, a force or dynamics, that is something processing power, the subject is intelligible. Inert elements have in their nature, not only their own identifying simple substance, but they have degrees of identifying simple substance. The human body also has its degree of life substance, existing in degrees suitable for all its uses. The innermost degrees of the life substances are suitable to the will and understanding. The outermost degrees to the very coarse, coarse tissue. And there is one continuous series of quality in degrees from the innermost to the outermost. So now he is explaining what are different qualities which are present in this vital substance or simple substance. First quality which he explains that it has intelligence. How one can predict that simple substance has an intelligence? There are simple, simple examples with which we can understand that vital principle or simple substance has an intelligence. Question is whether you have simple substance. If the answer is there, yes, then if I ask to jump down from the third floor. Are you going to do that? You will not going to do that because, because you have your intelligence. It is the intelligence of your vital principle, your simple substance, not of the body. It is not of the body which is thinking. Who is thinking? Thinking is the vital principle, the simple substance. It has an intelligence. It knows that if I will jump from such third floor, I will going to die. So intelligence is always there with the simple substance. Every time it uses the logic. It is a quality of the simple substance. It thinks with inductive and deductive reasoning. Every moment it used to develop, it used to work. It will not um, do anything unconsciously. It is always conscious things and then it works. So that is the first quality. Second important quality is that it has a will and understanding. Basically, will is very important because of which it survives. Because of which it maintains it and do certain things. There is always a purpose behind the life and that is the life purpose is of that vital principle. That is the purpose of your simple substance. It is not the purpose of your body. And this is what he tries to explain over there, that it has the will and as well as understanding. What is understanding? Understanding means it, it understands everything. It understands, it analyzes, it compares and then reacts. The things never happens instantaneously. Whenever you have to cross the street, what do you do? 
you look towards this side, then that side, whether any vehicle is coming, anything is coming, and nothing is there, then you cross the streets. Who is thinking this? Your simple substance is thinking this. It is not your body is thinking. So this is very important. It understands, yes, the, now there is no problem, then it works. It has a will, it has an understanding, it has an intelligence. All those qualities are of simple substance. So the human body also has a degree of life substance existing in degrees of suitableness for all its uses. The innermost degrees of life substance are suitable to the will and understanding and outermost degrees to the very coarsest tissue. Mm. And there is one continuous series of quality in the degrees from innermost to outermost. External of this is the tissues, the cells. With the help of these cells and tissues, this vital force reacts. It takes the help of it to react, to show the reaction. So this, this is very unique. That simple substance itself never reacts without the help of this tissue. It has twofold existence. The innermost in the form of intelligence, in the form of will and emotions, as well as in uh, understanding. And that reflects to the outermost, that is through the physical through the muscles, through the body, through the organs, through the systems. Every cell has within it, in the innermost and outermost, because there is nothing in that which is coarsest, but coarsest, but has that which is finest too. The outermost envelopes are dominated by coarser degrees of simple substances, substance, and the innermost qualities are dominated by the inner by the innermost degree. Each portion has an appropriate form and from the outermost to the innermost, it has all. So every human being is made up of with the structure, the external structure which is visible in the form of muscles, in the form of skin, in the form of bones, in the form of system, which is visible to your naked eye. This is outermost. If you go inside, you reach to the bone, the innermost structure of human body. But if you go more inside, it becomes metaphysical, which you cannot find it out. But you have to find it out in the form of a mind, in the form of a logic, in the form of intelligence, in the form of um, will, in the form of understanding. All those things which are invisible to your naked eye, but that constitutes your innermost. And this innermost controls the outermost. So according to your will, you act, your body act. You decide today, you decide before attending this lecture. Who decides? Your simple substance decides whether to attend or whether not to attend. First, it is decision of the innermost, and then accordingly your body starts working. So there, there is always a correlation between innermost to outermost. Each portion has an appropriate form and form from the outermost to the innermost it has all. Otherwise the human body could not be dominated or ruled by the soul. Each tissue has within it, in its portion of the vital substance, each having its own peculiar kind of function. Inner substances have their own degree. Silica has its degrees of simple substance within it which can be brought out by the process of potentization, whereby it may be continuously simplified, rendered finer and finer, so that each portion which remains may, may be continued potentization, be adapted to the higher degrees of the simple substance of the man. The 30th potency of silica will be sufficiently similar in the palm to reach the curative way some of the diseases of man, vice versa, such as dominating his economy in a correspondingly superficial and coarse series of the body. But it is true that silica ceases after a time to act in the 30th potency and it has to be further potentized in order that it may be similar in quality to the inner degree, even until it reaches the very innermost or the finest degree of simple substance. Now he is explaining how this innermost he get disturbed, how to how it can be treated. First important thing, this is always happens in the innermost. 
the degree of disturbance of the innermost expresses in the form of signs and symptoms accordingly. So accordingly, you find it out whole symptomatology, the totality of the symptoms, and that totality reflects on the basis of law of similars to the silica. But silicia, if you give it in crude form, nothing works. Still, that silica has the its own vital power, vital substance, but it is inert. Unless you go on liberating that quality, those properties, that energy of that silica, it is not possible that it will match or touch the innermost of the human being. How to liberate that? The process which developed by Hahnemann on the basis of physics, science of physics, as well as mathematics, and he prepared the potency. He started doing the succussions, the triturations, and if you reach to the silica 30, that is once you reached after 12C, it becomes purely dynamic, so fine that it starts showing only the properties, the original substance disappears. So, it, at that time, it goes into the metaphysical state, the way the disease happens at the metaphysical level. Now, the disease which happens in metaphysical level can be settled with the help of this silica, which is also metaphysical. Crude silica will not going to cure that dynamic disturbance, but the dynamic silica will going to cure that if the disease is very similar to the Mm, remedy is very similar to the disease manifestation. And this works and Hahnemann reached to that on the basis of this understanding of the simple substance. So simple substance which is there in the dynamic form, in, if there is any disturbance in the dynamic form, it should be treated with the dynamic remedy and on the basis of law of similars. Unless and until you make it dynamic, it will not going to work over there, it will not going to cure that. If after giving silica, if still patient is presenting some more symptoms of the silica, then it means that 30 is not sufficient. The inner disturbance is more higher quality. So you have to go for 200, you have to go for 1M. You are making it more and more dynamic, liberating more and more energy out of that by the process of potentization, by the process of succussion. And when you reach to that dynamic level of the innermost of the human being, then you can treat and you get the cure. So now you will understand why Kent has given so much of importance to this simple substance. Once you understand this concept of disease, that disease happens in the innermost and reflects it in the outermost, you have to treat the innermost. So this understanding, this clarity of thought is there in this chapter. Only few part of this chapter is remaining. Tomorrow we'll finish this chapter and then we'll go towards the next chapter. So that's all for today. Thank you being there. We'll meet today evening with the Lycopodium and we'll learn few cases of Lycopodium again in today's session at 8.30. And I think it will require one more tomorrow's lecture also for Lycopodium. So that's all for today. If any query is there, we'll have or discussion, otherwise we will conclude. So, thank you being there. We will meet in the evening.